Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Talent Insights keynote and panel discussion session powered by CC Webinar Live. And thank you for joining. We also would like to thank Talent for sponsoring today's session. And now I would like to pass on the microphone to Eric to introduce the keynote speaker and later on to moderate the panel. For audience, if you have any questions, do use the chat box option throughout this panel and keynote presentation. And that's all from my side. Eric, over to you. Thank you, Laura. And uh, I'm delighted to, to welcome you uh, all of out of there. Um, Care Community is organizing uh, so this next um, uh, Tell an Inside panel discussion and knowledge sharing uh, session powered by uh, CC Webinar Live and uh, sponsored by, uh, by Tellin. So uh, I would also and foremost um, uh, would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Vijay Budi from Tellin and uh, together with the panelists who will uh, I'll give a minute after the presentation to, uh, to introduce themselves. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome again. We're discussing uh, the new business models to meet the cables and ISPs, future connectivity and the digital demand. So, um, during this uh, session, Talon will uh, give us a 50 minutes keynote presentation and uh, we'll join the panel discussion uh, afterwards with the other industry experts uh, where we're going to discuss the, and, and share the insights related to the latest market trends. So uh, for the audience, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, uh, to leave them in the chat box and we will insert them within our uh, discussion, uh, uh, during our discussion or, uh, or at the end. So I'm happy to give the floor to, uh, to uh, Vijay Budi from, uh, from, uh, from Tellin. And um, uh, I'm really curious to, uh, to listen to you and to Tellin what would you have to tell us. So I'm happy to give the floor to Vijay from, uh, from Tellin. Please Vijay. Hey, thank you, Eric. Uh, my name is Vijayanto Budi, and for you, you can call me VJ. Uh, I'm with Talin for the uh, past five, five years, and uh, now I'm responsible for global business operation. Before, I was in uh, commercial uh, selling cable, and then uh, my responsibility was moved to uh, product management of Talin. Now, uh, I'm not in uh, global business operation. I would like to share my uh, presentation that I would like to present for another 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, this is the presentation that I'd like to share this uh, morning or this afternoon. Uh, the title is uh, New Business Models to Meet Cables and ISP, Future Connectivity and Digital Demands. I'm sorry, the uh, picture is, uh, was taken like uh, years ago when my hair still uh, grows uh, in my head and now I lost it. So uh, to cut in short, uh, I would like to start, sorry, I've got problem with my, okay. Uh, I would like to start with Telin. Uh, Telin is the international business arm of uh, PT Telecom, was uh, founded like 14 years ago. Actually uh, on 14th of March, uh, we are celebrating uh, 14th anniversary. So it's just like a uh, new anniversary uh, this week. And we have uh, like uh, 11 or 12 global offices uh, around the world. Actually, we have also some kind of uh, sales force in uh, India as well. And we uh, have 48 pop globally in 28 countries. And notably we have uh, 19 data centers around four countries. Uh, in Hong Kong, we have two there and then Singapore uh, and Timor-Leste, or East Timor, and the other one is in Indonesia. We have 25, uh, 2050, uh, sorry, uh, 250 global wholesale and enterprise customers. Uh, according to the number of eyeballs that we have in Indonesia, actually, uh, we are kind of a sexy, uh, we have like 177, uh, 173 million of subscribers as a mobile and we also have uh, 8 million of uh, high-speed uh, fixed broadband uh, internet subscribers so uh, we also maintain like 200 kilometers of subset marine cables around the world uh, we carry along 14 terabits of uh, global internet traffic from around the world to uh, Indonesia and uh, all around the world and we rank number two in uh, peering base uh, uh, ranking. Uh, so that's uh, about Tallinn. Uh, I would like to cut it short. Uh, uh, and then I would like to uh, start from the presentation. 
Actually, if you look at the presentation, then it reflects two different issues. First one is uh, what we see now uh, in business and connectivity business. What the gap of requirement that we are now and uh, what we, uh, the roadmap will be. Second thing is about the roadmap. Uh, after we uh, saw that there is a gap, then we think what the roadmap will be in the future. I think that the presentation will uh, focus on two uh, kind of uh, areas. First one, uh, okay. Cut from, uh, first one, I would like to start with the uh, connective uh, business today. I would like to share about three different aspects that characterize the connectivity business today. First one on flexibility and control. If we are talking about flexibility, then we need to talk about business model. The business model that we have now is quite rigid. Actually, uh, we can divide into two different uh, business models. First one is IRU and the other one is lease. I remember, I remember that when I was in uh, sales, if we got IRU uh, uh, close deal at that time, uh, it's like a mixed uh, feeling. The first one that, okay, we got the sales, but second thing that we think that if my IRU revenue will cover uh, my investment, because uh, that's always the question from financial. Uh, do you just sell 26 times or 40 times for IRU for 10 years or 15 years? Can you cover your uh, investment with that kind of revenue? That's uh, always a big question about IRU. Uh, second thing is uh, talking about flexibility is capacity because capacity in uh, submarine cable is kind of, uh, like fragmented. Somebody is just doing subsea. The other guy doing back hole and look on loop. Then when you need uh, something like end to end, you need to come to different parties. Even if somebody can provide you with end to end connectivity, more often that this guy need to come to other parties uh, to resell a product like back hole or local loop. So it can in, uh, increase the, the, the price of your connectivity because you need to approach multiple parties for your end-to-end -end connection. Second thing is diversity and end-to-end -end connection. Why is it important? Because if you are talking about ISP, big ISP, uh, I think we have Google here or we have Facebook here. They always ask for diversity, not only one plus one, but maybe one plus three or one plus four. I happen to uh, negotiate with uh, big ISPs from global, then the question is, uh, can you just give us diversity? Not only the subsea, not only the backbone, but also backhole and local loop. In this case, that's a new requirement, but I think that it might be a trend in uh, tomorrow's business of connectivity that visibility on diversity is important or become more important than today at least. The last thing about flexibility and control on is on scheme. As I said before that the scheme is just maybe long list, IRU, but if you need temporary, let's say if you are a broadcaster company, you just to cover uh, an event for one week and then uh, you will dismantle your, uh, your cable, let's say for another three months and then you will put it on again uh, for another two weeks. It's difficult because uh, most of the business model, most of the scheme that you have is just lease. You use it for a certain period of time, let's say at least three months, then you stop it. But uh, recently we saw that the uh, demand on uh, temporary or PSU use is increasing. So it's important uh, because uh, demands in the market is already there, then uh, connectivity provider like Tailin need uh, to provide that kind of, uh, to satisfy the services uh, on uh, PSU use uh, scheme. Second thing, we talk about security. Why is it important? If you look at the, uh, the graphic uh, 
in the slide, you can see that in big enterprise, the number of attack uh, growth uh, from last year, not only the number, but the traffic size of attack is also growth uh, more significantly uh, compared to the number of attack. Uh, based on telling data, based on telling data on uh, our own customers, uh, last year, the growth of number of attack is five times, while the size of attack uh, grows 24 times. So uh, ISP doesn't just thinking about how to expand their network, but also they are aware of the security over the network. So somebody like uh, connectivity providers need to think how to deliver uh, security to their customer, especially for big ISPs. Uh, third thing is on access to eyeballs. If in the past you are talking about uh, connectivity providers asking for connectivity, uh, let's say for Trans-Pacific, you don't think about how to satisfy the access to eyeballs to this guy. Why? Because uh, it's just subsea. You don't need to talk about data center. We don't need to talk about how to provide eyeballs to this guy. But today is different. If we talk about ISP, their main focus is on grabbing the eyeballs in a local market. Uh, it happens in Indonesia, then I think it also happens in other countries. So uh, the character of accessing eyeballs is, uh, can be important uh, in the future. So uh, I think this uh, characterizes the uh, connectivity business of today, uh, lack of flexibility and control, security is uh, increasing uh, in importance, and uh, access to eyeballs uh, need, need to be considered because uh, ISPs uh, are focused on the access to eyeballs. So, uh, what will be what it will be in tomorrow business? First one. Marketplace for connectivity is important. Marketplace means uh, you have a seamless and flexible connectivity solution. Solution, you, just, you don't just talk about submarine cable, but you need to talk about metro, you need to talk about data center, uh, cloud, peering, etc. So uh, you need platform for connectivity uh, so that you can uh, manage the orchestration, order, and monitoring. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, we have saw that the demand in market asking for order and provisioning in one day, 24 hours. If you then have the platform, you then have the tools, then you finish. Uh, sometimes uh, the order is uh, more extreme, extreme than 24 hours. It uh, uh, asking for, let's say, uh, instant provisioning. So. That's a big challenge for uh, connectivity providers to uh, deliver that kind of service uh, to customer. The other important thing about marketplace is flexible business model. Uh, as I said previously in the previous slide, then uh, there is a demand in the market that uh, somebody need a demand for NPS you use. Flexible routes, uh, meaning that uh, today, uh, customer is asking for uh, connectivity from Singapore to Hong Kong. Then the other day, they are asking for uh, connectivity, not Singapore to Hong Kong, but Singapore to Japan uh, with different bandwidth. So you need uh, to have like a platform, you need to have a marketplace to satisfy that kind of uh, uh, request. Uh, for example, uh, just uh, give you an example of BCW and Console Connect. Uh, they are developing a uh, platform and marketplace for connectivity. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, I think uh, Sayo has also uh, this kind of uh, thing. Uh, they have a marketplace that we can join in and we can have like a sky scanner when you buy a ticket. So if you want to buy a ticket from, uh, let's say from Singapore to Paris, you can see what kind of air, uh, airlines that you will use and how much is important that uh, you need to pay for the ticket. In this case also, uh, you, can, you, have, you will have the visibility of how much the cost of the connectivity that you need to bear. Uh, uh, you need to, uh, to bear. Uh, <clears throat> so you can just easily to calculate in your 
cost benefit analysis. Second thing is about security. We need to enhance connectivity portfolio by adding security as a fund services. But there's a big question for telecom operator. How to acquire security competence? You need to build it or you need to buy it? It's a, a challenging question here. Uh, let me give you an example for AT&T. AT&T and Akame, uh, uh, they are in collaboration to, pre to provide security solution as a part of cloud and network services portfolio. If you just uh, look at a bit deeper, even at the end, the big uh, operators in the world, uh, they are not building their own uh, security, but they are in partnership with other uh, providers to deliver it uh, to its customer. Second things that you need to, uh, sorry, the third thing that you need to keep in mind is data center, because data center is a home for CDN and cloud. So uh, for me, data center is like a lock-in, lock-out strategy, meaning if you have customers uh, coming to you, then you can uh, ask them to reset in your data center and lock in, and you never allow them to go out from our data center because we can provide uh, connectivity. We just don't talk about data center as data center, but it's a connected data center when the connection uh, can be domestic and global. A data center that can provide our customer with uh, uh, eyeballs, the, the best eyeballs, uh, so that they will stay in our premises uh, as, uh, and we have cooperation with them uh, together. There's a thing is about the accelerating new cable development to address high bandwidth demand. Uh, as you know, the pandemic uh, has created uh, new demand in uh, in connectivity because application on hungry bandwidth uh, emerges. Uh, also, that the pandemic has created offshore rather than onshore, meaning that uh, if you don't come to the uh, uh, to the per, uh, to the local market, then your equipment, your connectivity must uh, come to uh, the local market. That's why data center is a key central if we are talking about. Uh, connectivity business of tomorrow. Uh, this is just a uh, highlight about uh, marketplace and platform of connectivity. Uh, it can be uh, on uh, mobile equipment. Uh, it's a combination of uh, multiple product, not only connectivity, but also data center, security, maybe then IoT, cloud uh, connection, etc. cetera. Uh, it's a marketplace where uh, your customer, your provider, your partner uh, uh, can come together. And it's fast delivery and real-time customer engagement. Why, as I said before, uh, somebody in, uh, I mean, customer needs uh, provisioning in very short uh, notice, in very short time let's say for 24 hours or less than 24 hours, uh, they're asking about SLA, uh, high quality, accessible, uh, let's say for 24, every 24 hours, then we need to have like uh, fast delivery and real-time customer engagement. Uh, theoretically, uh, uh, in Tallinn, we call it pipe, uh, uh, four P, sorry, four P. Uh, the first P is pipe, uh, is building seamless infrastructure and uh, robust connectivity, not only subsea, but also big hole uh, and also local loop. Uh, second thing is platform. We we develop a fit bandwidth for connectivity orchestration. The name of orchestration is important. And then portal, because it's accessible uh, in portal uh, for order and monitoring. Partnership is important because uh, we would like to uh, develop marketplace where digital players or ISPs, uh, cloud providers, cable operators, customer like enterprise comes together uh, in the same place and process. Uh, it looks easier uh, if you look at the marketplace, but the process is important because it's different, totally different with the process that, process that you have now. Uh, you need to have a new process uh, to have the marketplace uh, to run. This is security. Uh, 
for Terra in itself, we don't uh, develop our own, we don't build, but we uh, we in partnership with uh, a number of uh, providers. Why number of providers? Because we need to make it sure that uh, it covers a layer of protection starting from network into application layers. We need to make sure that the protection cover global and domestic coverage. And uh, we need to make it sure that it's reliable and scalable. Meaning uh, if somebody like big customer asking for security, we can provide it. But in the meantime, it's uh, like a small medium enterprise, just a small company uh, need for security, then we can still accommodate their uh, request because uh, the request can be different, the price can, differ, can be different as well. So and that's why we have a multiple partnership with a uh, number of uh, security providers in order to uh, deliver security in the right segment and in the right place. I think uh, we come to the last presentation, last slide, this is the data center that we have. Actually, we have uh, in Singapore, uh, the big one is Stalin 3, there's a big uh, data center. We are now almost running out of capacity. Uh, almost 80% uh, of the capacity is always already consumed by customer. Uh, we have uh, ITEC 2 in Tower 2 uh, in Hong Kong. In Indonesia, uh, we divided the data center into three different uh, data centers. First one is uh, Telkom Sigma. It's a big data center. Uh, in the past, it was focused on uh, customer, uh, enterprise customer. But today, we also serve uh, big ISPs with uh, Telkom Sigma data center. And then we have uh, New Centric. Uh, New Centric, we have in 14 different locations in, across Indonesia. Uh, it's uh, smaller than Telkom Sigma data center. Uh, it's meant to be uh, for ads and uh, accessing uh, local uh, eyeballs so that uh, the quality of service, especially on uh, time of access uh, is faster rather than concentrating data center only one in Jakarta. And the last one uh, is the uh, hyperscale data center that uh, and, and that will be ready uh, in Q3, Q4 this year. There's a real uh, big data center for ISPs that uh, they can provide uh, cloud uh, in this data center. So I think uh, that concludes my uh, presentation, Eric. So uh, get back to you again. Thank you, VJ, and thank you for uh, for, for 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 sharing this uh, this valuable information with uh, uh, with us and and, and the audience uh, uh, outside. Now I'm quickly checking if you're uh, if if we uh, getting some uh, some questions on the chat box, which is actually none. So, uh, VJ, it has been very very clear what you've been telling us. So that's uh, congratulations on that one. Now I have a, a quick question for you. What has been in the in the total process uh, and for for your complete let's say a uh, business proposition what has been the, the the most difficult part to to integrate within your uh, uh with within your process but what has been the the the, the toughest one from all yeah. the elements you 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 mentioned okay so i think uh, there are two eric first one is uh, the external as i said before uh, in the past we all uh, we only concentrate on subsea uh, we don't think about a uh, big hole in Hong Kong. We don't think about how to provide local loop in, in the Philippines. Then uh, when, uh, when it comes, as, when customer comes to us asking for end-to-end -end connectivity, in particular area in Hong Kong, then we need to talk about, uh, to talk with the uh, providers in Hong Kong. It takes time. So the most difficult part is uh, how to provide the service to end, to customer end to end uh, on time. That's the big question for us. That's uh, for external. Internal as well, uh, we have difficulties because if you talk about telecom, then it's a big company, it's a group. So uh, we have somebody who is responsible for, let's say, uh, domestic, there are several, meaning one is for enterprise, the other one uh, is wholesale. Sometimes uh, we need to talk to them one by one. Uh, which one the appropriate channel for particular, particular customers? That takes time as well. 
So if you are asking for what is the big challenge uh, now is how to provide the service on time uh, as requested by customers. Okay, thank you so much, uh, VJ. And um, uh, as you all see, we, we have um, um, uh, more people on the on the panel here. And uh, and I'm, I'm, uh, 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 let me give just a quick minute to 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 empty Swen, Ricardo, uh, Chris, and uh, Jar. To, to give a quick minute to introduce themselves and, and and then we can move on to the to the to the panel discussion so so Vijay again for you and Talon, thank you so much for for, for sharing this uh, the, the, the um, uh, uh, your presentation and keynote speech with, with, with us and uh, empty Swan uh, uh, welcome and um, um, uh, please please take the floor to uh, to introduce you yourself and uh, and your company please with us thank you okay thank you. Uh, it is MT. Nice to meet you all here. Uh, I'm responsible for the uh, global submarine network planning and the implementation for China Mobile. Yeah, I'm based in Hong Kong. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, let, 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 let's move from, uh, from, from Hong Kong to, to, to Singapore. Chris, welcome. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Hampart Sumian. I'm based in Singapore, as Eric uh, uh, just said. Uh, I'm a customer engineer at Google, so a uh, Google Cloud. So I work with a variety of customers, either taking their business globally or some of the global uh, businesses coming into the region. So we're, you know, somewhere in the middle of, of, of course, we we consume subsea, um, and we have demand on the other side. So uh, you know, we see both sides of it. And we buy and we invest in cables as well, but we certainly uh, we consume uh, a subsidy bandwidth on behalf of our customers and, of course, on behalf of the rest of Google and um, how we're moving all that data around. I'm sure we'll get to all that. Thanks, Eric. Absolutely, Chris, and thank you, and, and, and uh, uh, honored having you. So uh, let's go to Europe now. Um, uh, Ricardo, Madrid, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, I'm Ricardo Ferro, I work at Facebook. Uh, in the summer network investment area in the region. Okay, thank you. And we'll stay in Europe and we go to uh, uh, Johar. Johar, welcome. Honored having you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. So my name is uh, Johar Gelassi. I am a solution consultant working for Telstra in the uh, Paris office. Uh, and I am supporting our wholesale customers uh, across the uh, EMEA region. Thank you. Okay, thank you and honored having you, uh, Johar. And, uh, uh, yes, Paris, beautiful city. Worked there for many, many years. So, um, uh, guys, we are this, uh, the, 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 the discussing actually the new business model to meet the cables and the ISPs, future connectivity and digital demand. So, um, uh, just to bump in, we're, we're, we're talking about it and, and, and we would like to get, let's say, an understanding of uh, what do we currently see? How does the market look like? And, and can you give us an overview? And, and MT, if, if I may, may start with you, um, what do we see? What, 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 what are the characteristics of the, of the, of the, of the market uh, situation today? Yeah, you um, okay. Uh, actually, uh, I actually see my customer here, Chris uh, Daphne. He is uh, one of the user consuming the uh, capacity on the subsea network. Of course, um, uh, other than uh, the, uh, the OTT we hear, I think um, some of our other customers are also uh, another like Chinese OTT, uh, the global ITT. I think the, uh, the network strategy or network uh, uh, organization, I, I should say network structure uh, for, every net, uh, for every company already changing from the um, maybe some 10 years ago, it is only pure server to the client model. It is only one end to another, way, uh, another end. But uh, uh, thanks to the cloud technology, the, uh, the cloud changing the, uh, the, the structure. Uh, now, I think the cloud is, means your data will be, uh, will be storage in everywhere, in every data center, uh, uh, in every region. So the, uh, the data between every data center will be, uh, has to be synchronization in every time, from time to time, maybe uh, in daytime, in nighttime. So um, the, uh, you, uh, because of the, the, the cloud technology or the structure of the cloud, um, it will be require a large, uh, a huge uh, data connectivity between uh, every data center in, the, in, it, uh, in different regions. And also the local user, uh, the local consumer will be uh, accessing to the uh, data center uh, locally, maybe uh, in the same region. For example, maybe 
um, for example, the uh, Indonesian uh, user, they will uh, their data or their um, message go to access to the data center in Indonesia, maybe Singapore, uh, and then uh, some other data. So maybe perhaps uh, they will be uh, going to access to uh, another data center in Philippines or, or Hong Kong. But I think um, the user data uh, for every transaction they won't go into uh, another region like uh, US or Europe uh, to access for their data. So, um, so uh, for for uh, for China Mobile, we see uh, we are seeing this uh, synergy, and also uh, that it is also the reason why we are going to build uh, uh, building our global sub C network. We are building the uh, cables in the APAC region uh, for uh, connecting to the mount, uh, to those hub area like Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan, and also extending the um, our. Uh, uh, subsea project from uh, from Singapore through the Middle East and then going to Europe and also we join uh, went we join the true Africa project to um, uh, accessing the uh, all of the area in the Africa and connecting to the uh, multiple data center and make sure it is open. I think the open access for the uh, for the new cable is quite important. We got it right. Uh, so um, because the open access, it is able to allow. Uh, as much as possible user uh, to accessing the resources and uh, interconnecting to their own cloud services in multiple regions. So I think um, it is uh, something the ISP is looking forward to, uh, to make sure that they are able to uh, utilize multiple uh, connectivity, uh, multiple uh, in, in huge uh, capacity and with different cable routes for diversity. So I think it is something um, uh, we have uh, we expected. So uh, um, I I think we are quite in in the same page with uh, most of the OTT players. So that's why um, uh, we are building for multiple uh, subsea cables, uh, even though in the same region maybe we we would we want um, to build more capacity, more fiber pair on each cable system. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Johar, um, uh, also from an operator point of view, um, um, we would like to understand, let's say, your view on, on yeah. what, we are, what we are currently seeing, you know, and, uh, and uh, especially on the, on, the, um, uh, on the digital demand and, and, and the connectivity. What do you see? Sure. So what we do know uh, actually is that the demand for data is not dropping today and we are not expecting it to decrease uh, in, the, in the future. This was clearly a year of, uh, of expansion. Uh, the demand for capacity has been massively grown during the past year. Is it due to the pandemic? Is it normal evolution of the internet? Probably a mix of both. Huh? But what we know is that during the crisis, we enabled people to work remotely, uh, children to continue learning with homeschooling. Uh, but also we are seeing in the meantime more people are around the world consuming more and more uh, content services uh, from on-demand streaming to gaming and, uh, and social media. Uh, at Telstra during this fiscal year to date, so we are three to four months far from the end of the fiscal year, we have delivered to our customers 15 terabit of subsea uh, capacity, new subsea capacity, and 16 terabit of terrestrial backhaul. That includes something around 110, 100 gig Ethernet services. And we are continuing to receive new requests and new orders for uh, 100 gig services. There has been clearly a significant increase this year of 100 gig services across the globe. We are noticing a real accelerated transition uh, toward 100 gig capacity. This was already the case for uh, OTT since a few years. Now we are seeing most of the ISPs upgrading their backbones from 10 gigs to 100 gigs. Uh, on multiple routes, including intra-Asia and uh, Trans-Pacific. And maybe one point um, interesting to mention here is that generally when we receive an order for a new 100 gig uh, Ethernet private line, this will come automatically with a very short lead time to deliver. So it's not only about having additional capacity, it's also uh, to, to be able to deliver quickly uh, for an immediate use of this, of this capacity. Of course, all these have been possible thanks to the uh, infrastructure, and a major part of this infrastructure, uh, infrastructure is the uh, submarine cable network. The submarine cable industry continues to expand as the demand for capacity is continuing to grow. Submarine cable systems clearly remain the primary path, uh, the primary method of transporting internet traffic uh, across the globe 
because of their uh, the, their speed, uh, capacity, security, and also pricing are compared to other solutions like uh, satellites. However, we know constructing a submarine cable uh, network requires a massive and a significant amount of money. That's why the business model is, is, is really important and financing a submarine cable system can be uh, very complex and very challenging for the sponsors. No, absolutely. Thank you, Johai. So, um, uh, uh, Ricardo, um, from your point of view, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I can, I, I can, of course, um, uh, uh, imagine that that you know, at, at at Facebook, you're 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 quite a guy who who's who's let's say sort of demanding in this uh, in this uh, in this industry. Um, uh, how how do you see let's say um, uh, uh, the, the the current situation? Well, what is from your point of view that, that you say like you know what okay the 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 the, the, it, the, the digital demand and, and absolutely the the, uh, the 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 connectivity around the world? Um, can, can you give us let's say your understanding of it and 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 yeah, what so, you currently see? Thank you, Eric. I believe that uh, it doesn't uh, seem much more different from what we have heard uh, from carriers or uh, so far. So at the end, what is the problem we, what, that we need to solve? Uh, if it is just uh, to serve end customers or to serve your own applications, which are your internal customers, what, you, you, what, what we see is that the demand is for turning up more capacity uh, at the faster pace, have flexibility in the network because a new application might demand uh, more capacity for the yesterday and uh, to a new route that uh, we had enabled so much capacity. So uh, at the end is, okay, how we can improve all this and how we can uh, carry on on a flexible way, tens, hundreds of terabits across the entire world. So this is the, the kind of problem that we, we, need, we are facing and we need to solve. And uh, putting aside the scale of tens, hundreds of terabits, it is not different from what we have heard so far. So at the end, uh, what, what it, it, it ends in, okay, you need to have a, a ground basic infrastructure that support all that growth. So that infrastructure has to be scalable. You need to have the right tools to activate capacity immediately. And uh, this means that you need to invest as well in hardware and uh, as uh, Javar mentioned, we need to do it in a cost-effective way, so the business model counts. So at the end, uh, what I would, what I, what I see is that all of us are on the same boat. It's clearly that there are common goals that is develop a scalable, sustainable, worldwide infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure that is critical because without submarine cables, inter intercontinental connectivity, the internet would not exist none of the cloud applications. And that means that we need to look at new partnership models uh, to work together, co-investing and partnering, uh, developing that such infrastructure, because none of us uh, can uh, solve that problem by uh, by themselves. Okay, thank you. I mean, uh, and, 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 and I know in, in our panel discussion, we'll, uh, move, we'll, we'll move on to, 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 to see what, actually what is needed and, and, and how can it uh, kind of be achieved. Um, let me s s still go back from, from, from um, uh, to, 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 to the previous uh, um, sub-meta topic. So Chris, um, can you characterize the, 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 the current situation? What do you see and, uh, and, and maybe what, what does Google see? Hmm. Uh, yes, thank you, Eric. Um, so we see that, uh, as everyone said, growth, uh, demand, in increasing demand, increasing capacity. But actually, what's driving that and what we see is transformation, um, transformation of business and, uh, and what people do and how they do it. I'll give you a few examples. Right? Why, is, why is there so much demand? Um, a few areas that are driving demand that didn't exist a few years ago. And we have com customers coming to us with huge needs. Esports, gaming. Tens of thousands, even millions of viewers, people watching people play other games. And it tr transcends geographic boundaries. Games made in Singapore are watched in Brazil. And of course, that data has to get there. Um, entertainment. Uh, Netflix, it was just, uh, it's been Netflix for a few years, but now we've got Amazon and now we've got Disney and we've got Disney Hotstar. And they're all rolling out and they all, all those, that video needs to move around the world and everyone's consuming stuff. 
from all over the place. And that was traditionally um, satellite. That would have gone via um, primary distribution would have been satellite for, for TV and, and television. Um, and then uh, we're seeing other customers with, you know, they're setting up some pretty big pipes with some big storage needs and they have studios around the world and it's movie production, visual effects. And, you know, they're not just kind of where well, they're still doing two, three hour movies. And of course, it's been a bit different for the past year, of course, but they're making them in higher and higher resolution with more and more layers to the visual effects. And they have huge storage needs, huge capacity and network needs. And these are the customers that are coming to us. Um, and and using cloud services, so, so you know they you know cloud kind of sits in the middle. So we see that demand come from the customers, and sometimes our customers' customers who are the end users, um, and then we are part in, in part investing in subsea uh, with with some of the people with Facebook and with um, uh, Telstra. Uh, but of course, we we buy we can we consume loads of uh, connectiv um uh, connectivity, 144 um, pops to the to the Google network, um, and we're peering in all the exchanges. So uh, we're, we're buying loads of that data for our customers and for our own traffic. So um, it's real transformation. The last two decades saw you know the internet coming about, and then it, the mobile phone was was pretty transformative. But now the transformation that's happening is what people are doing on their mobile phone with the internet. They're buying food, they're watching video, their social media, Facebook is here. These things didn't exist before. So that's the driver for consumption. Um, so yeah, just uh, uh, more growth, um, more speed, lower latency. Oh yeah, and that, that other one I wanted to add, which we haven't even seen happen yet. We're talking uh, again with the, the different parts of the telco, but 5G. 5G is coming online and what are the use cases, all of the applications in kind of healthcare and in uh, navigation and in uh, delivery and logistics, much faster. So that's of course at the edge, but it all comes back to then um, uh, distribution of, of content or data around the world as well. So we don't see the, the demand slowing down at all. No, and um, which is which is actually a, um, uh, a good thing. And thank you, Chris. Now we mentioned this already. I mean, one of the panelists already the, the, the moved into it. Is is to, to to see how the cable operators actually design their their, their business plan. So, um, uh, how to meet the ISPs' um, uh, current and future demand. And and we, we see a huge development in the in the new subsea cables uh, coming alive, which uh, some of you are are part of. Uh, uh, and the real push from the from from the ISP. So, uh, VJ, if I may start with you, um, um, can you keep up with that demand? Uh, and, and and how do we need to change? I mean, we discussed already. You know, our, our target time to market needs to needs to move up. I mean, that's also the, the demand we see, and especially um, uh, uh, Ricardo that, that talked about it, and 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 Joe Hart that 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 you know the push is there to uh, to to deliver fast. Um, uh, although I think it, it's not only delivering fast because it's not always non-complex to 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 have also uh, as well the top-notch quality uh, quality of service in in your place. So, um, um, how can we how can we let's say um, um, meet the ISP um, uh, let's say future um, uh, demands? What can we do? What could what do we need to change? Yeah. Uh, actually, we can uh, start uh, with what the ISP required uh, today. Uh, in the past, uh, let us, I would like to recall what MT said that uh, in the past, uh, cable operator just focus on, uh, let's say, from pop to pop, uh, thinking about uh, how to connect just one pop to pop in, 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 in some way. Uh, sometimes we just even not pop to pop, but uh, CLS to CLS, meaning uh, the uh, the port uh, on on the beach, so that's uh, what we were thinking uh, in the past. Uh, but the demand from uh, from ISP now is different. The ISP need to get an access to to eyeballs, meaning that uh, we need uh, they they are going to uh, to deliver their content to the eyeballs so that uh, their customer can access. I think that's the important thing that we need to uh, satisfy now. That uh, we need start thinking uh, how to give end-to-end -end, uh, connectivity to, to, to ISP or to big ISP, global ISPs. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I don't know, I, I cannot recall, uh, maybe Chris has uh, said before or Jawar that 
uh, diversity, diversity is important. Uh, we can just have uh, one uh, single route to, to, uh, to ISP. Even one plus one is not uh, enough. Uh, ISPs need uh, more than one plus one, uh, one plus two or one plus three, not only uh, in the subsea cable, but also in the local. Uh, that's uh, the other uh, important thing. In the other side, if you are a cable operator, it's difficult to just uh, invest uh, multiple diversity by yourself. Then uh, I agree with uh, Jawar and Chris that we need to uh, talk about how to uh, go together like a consortium uh, to have multiple cables uh, so that uh, at least our investment is not as big as that uh, we need to uh, deliver if we want to go by uh, our, ourselves. I think that's important, uh, two important thing that I would like to share uh, on how we need to go for, for the next uh, connectivity business uh, uh, tomorrow. Okay, Th thank you, MT. You wanna add something to that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think uh, uh, other than the uh, one percent of the diversity, I think um, we're also looking for the uh, the five G network. You know, uh, the five G network already uh, being deployed and uh, already in commercially used, widely using uh, in multiple countries, especially in China, in Hong Kong, and also in some other uh, European countries. I, I think um, that definitely will be uh, increasing the uh, demand for the for the capacity, uh, because I think um, uh, the, uh, in in the four G stage, uh, most of the user will still be the really the the, the, uh, the actual user. Uh, every people maybe having one uh, one mobile phone, even the two mobile phone. I believe for all of us, most of us having at least two mobile phone in the pocket right now, and uh, in the five G stage. Um, I think it is not only about the, uh, the people who are going, uh, going to utilizing the network, uh, I mean the 5G network or internet, uh, even though for the something, um, something uh, object like uh, the, um, uh, the connected car, or the, uh, the auto driving car, that will be uh, also make use of the internet, uh, make use of the, uh, the 5G network to uh, transport the, uh, the huge capacity in its short time and uh, to, uh, to make sure they are able to get an immediate response from the uh, wheel situation uh, on, uh, on the road. And also other than connected car, but also for some home African, you, we are also able to uh, remote control to the, uh, to the home African. And even though actually we don't have to control the, those African. For example, your, your, uh, um, your air conditioner is able to turn in the, uh, the, air, the, the room temperature uh, by themselves. Uh, your uh, your freezer also able to uh, the, I mean the uh, the fridge also able to turn, uh, the automatically adjust the temperature maybe even though your rice cooker will start the rice uh, cooking the uh, the rice to waiting you back home for the dinner I think it is a um, uh, the thanks to the five G network um, uh, to create more uh, connectivity uh, for the uh, making us more easier more uh, living with more easy and also um, uh, mo most of the object like uh, uh, maybe the uh, in the logistic uh, industry all of the um, package is also able to uh, fill in with some um, maybe in 5g network uh, um, sim card to uh, make sure you are you have the real-time access where is your uh, packaging uh, located and you are able to expect how uh, how soon your package your your parcel is uh, going to arrive to your home something like that so um because of that uh, it is we uh, relate to the uh, uh, reliable network with uh, the diversity network and also with a huge uh, capability network to make sure it is able to uh, to achieve those uh, idea so um i think uh, the demand for the ISP definitely uh, we, we don't know what is the tomorrow demand for uh, for uh, for those applications but the network already there uh, every uh, application developer is able to make use of the network from the uh, no matter from the uh, sub C side uh, for the networks uh, I mean the for, for the next uh, fixed network also for the mobile network to developing uh, an, uh, another something new 
uh, something innovative uh, application for all of us. Yeah. Okay, th th thank you, MT. So, um, uh, Ricardo, um, uh, I, I see and uh, listen to, to, to all of you guys what, what, what's, what's, what's actually currently happening. What is, uh, I mean, Chris, Chris was uh, talking about, let's say, all the industries which actually never existed and, and actually are coming now. Uh, towards us, so 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 there's the demand. MT was was was, was talking about you know all, all other let's say also um, uh, from 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 um, uh, uh, IoT um, um, uh, services and, and and machine to machine, which is actually coming over us. So um, there will be a huge 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 demand coming coming uh, towards us. And uh, we're getting, let's say, sort of a little bit overwhelmed. So, um, uh, what, what, from your point of view, can we do about it? What can we really do to 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 speed it up and and and, and to be ready, let's say, for 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 that demand for, from your point of view? Well, it's an interesting question <laughs> because uh, what we see is that there's been an acceleration in 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 the development of new products, uh, products that will demand uh, higher bandwidth. And uh, just if you allow me, for the last 30 years, video phones where people were not using it at home, etc. It's not a new product, but now because of a totally unforeseen situation uh, that we are facing during the last 12 months, everybody, every single opa, oma, young kid has become an expert using Meet, Zoom, Team, whatever video applications. And uh, you see that if I compare with what we have been using in, in business video calls a couple of years ago, with the quality that, that you can expect from just the standard home applications is, in, is amazing. And this is just the, <laughs> the peak of the iceberg. So when augmented reality, virtual reality applications will develop, uh, you you know things like e-learning. Someone in in the middle of a small village, virtually being sitting at the same class, uh, attending university as others, will will uh, make it affordable for those guys to access this quality education. Uh, the demand will will keep growing. So I believe that there are no limits. Uh, we see that things are accelerating, and on the other hand. We are just like plumbers in that industry. We just uh, uh, have to, to work with, with pipes. <laughs> and building those pipes uh, takes not one year, two years, in sometimes three, five years. So there are a lot of things that it would be great if we could work together to facilitate the development of that infrastructure. Just starting from the permitting side, you know, it, it, governments are now realizing about the criticality of getting international connectivity. All the governments in the world are talking about uh, digital transformation of their economies. But if uh, uh, for landing a cable, it takes you three years to get the permit, uh, you are throwing stones in, in, in your uh, uh, own roof. And on the other hand, uh, we have to look at what is the capability of that industry. Because building submarine cables has been like a special thing special project there are only a few companies in the world with the resources and capabilities and has been a cyclic business you have seen late 90s early 2000 a lot of cables were built and then for about 10 years nothing happened it seems that we are now again in building modules replacing the existing cable footprint but the other thing what we see is that the technology uh, the evolution of the technology is accelerating and, and systems that have been designed and put in service five years ago, they are close to be obsolete in three years. Whereas before a submarine cable was designed for 25 years and, 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 and we see some of them has last over 20 years. So I believe that it's not an easy answer, Eric. It, it requires uh, all the industry players to, to, to work together uh, in cooperation and see uh, what, how we can improve the deployment of that infrastructure. And, and again, from the permitting to the manufacturing, as well to the electronics.
No, absolutely, and and that, I mean a, a lot of pillars to 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 work on. But but VJ, I mean, and and with talent, I mean. I mean, uh, you know, you invested a huge amount of 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 of, of money, and and and, um, uh, and 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 to to make a little bit of a change to 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 within your within your bit of business models, which you clearly did, uh, and just pinpointing out that that you let's say um, looked for a partner with with regards to 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 the security because you didn't want to build it yourself, which means that immediately you have um uh, you, 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 uh, your faster time to market which um, on behalf of, let's say, the security, which we understand, but um, uh, also on the new investment opportunities and, 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 and to growth and, and, and growth, let's say, of the submarine markets um, and demand. Um, what do you think we, 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 we can expect? I mean, not only from talent, but, but let's say uh, uh, around the world. Yeah, uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, I would like to uh, set the experience uh, in the past, uh, when we go into investment uh, of submarine cable, then we just uh, together with uh, cable operators. It's like we are with uh, CMI, we are with, uh, let's say, uh, China Telecom. Uh, that's a common consortium uh, develop, uh, submarine cable development. That's what we have uh, in the past. Uh, but today is different. Uh, if in the past we thought about, we think about that uh, OTT is our uh, enemy. Uh, I mean, uh, we are sometimes in, uh, in the opposition side uh, with, with, with OTT because uh, they are thinking about, ah, OTT is uh, gripping our market, uh, nothing left uh, to, uh, to the operators. But uh, today is different, totally different. Uh, we are thinking OTT is our partner even in the, uh, in the development of uh, new cables, subsea cable, Eric. So that's uh, the thing that uh, we need to uh, to share that we are together with OTT uh, in the development of uh, uh, new cables uh, in order to to have the uh, the time of delivery uh, shorter than uh, than usual. That's uh, the thing uh, what we we are doing in development of new cables. A uh, second thing is about uh, how we uh, go to the market. In the past, uh, we always uh, wait for the cable uh, ready for service. Then after that, uh, we are approaching our potential customers to sell our cables. That takes longer. Uh, that's why uh, Ricardo said in the past, uh, the cable is, uh, uh, is around 20 years maybe, or even more. Uh, even uh, we have experienced that uh, some of the cables uh, has already obsolete, but uh, we still retain some capacity. Uh, but today, uh, we are different. Uh, we are more proactive, uh, even uh, when we are in the development of new cables, when we are, even when we are having a MOU uh, with our potential uh, partners to develop new cables, we are already uh, in the market. We are approaching, uh, we are approaching the uh, potential customers to get uh, the cable uh, so that's why it's like, uh, we call it pre-sales, uh, like you are buying apartment and you are just uh, buy when the apartment is uh, uh, groundbreaking. That's uh, 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 pretty much a faster uh, type of approach when uh, you, you are going to the market. And that's important because uh, the last uh, business model for new cables, uh, it only lasts uh, five or six years rather than uh, 15 or 25 years. Uh, I think it's a, a big difference. You need to adapt with the new uh, demand on, on, on the market, then you must be more flexible than, uh, than before. If not, then uh, you will be uh, left behind. That's the okay. thing I would like to say. Okay, thank you. So um, uh, while moving with, with, let's say, the next generation planning into the digital area, uh, I'm, I'm curious just to, to see, I mean, maybe, um, uh, uh, Johai, you, 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 you can share from, um, uh, from, from an operator point, point of view uh, some uh, things. With, well, what is there to do? What, 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 what's there to do? And maybe you can bridge this a little bit to, to, to what, what, what we actually can expect um, in, the, on, in, the, uh, in the future. So double question, yeah. actually, for you. Thank you. 
Thank you for that. Um, what to expect? Clearly, yeah, the demand is growing, so we need to continue to invest uh, to sustain this uh, this growth. Uh, Telstra, at Telstra, we own and operate the largest uh, intra-Asia subsea network with uh, around 30% of the active capacity in the in the region. We are investing significantly in the cable, uh, in the cable um, subsea expansion, uh, and we are committed to continue. Uh, that investment uh, uh, as the demand uh, on network capacity is uh, is increasing we have acquired uh, for example 25 percent uh, equity in in southern cross cable uh, cable network uh, joining the existing shareholders in the project and and also partnering with ccn as a, a major uh, customer for the upcoming southern cross next cable that will be the express route the lowest latency route between uh, sydney to uh, to los angeles and also connecting Lots of uh, Pacific Islands, uh, Fiji, Samoa, to both Australia and uh, and uh, and uh, USA. Telstra is also investing in in other cables uh, with many uh, of the of the partners here in PLCN, in uh, Hong Kong America Cable, uh, etc. We know it. Uh, OTTs are driving a lot of growth, and I think Chris said it earlier. Uh, we are working with them in close partnership. We are working with the, the biggest OTT, with the media and content providers to ensure. Their services are available where, where, when they are ne uh, needed. Now, the reality is that, uh, as we said earlier, OTTs are very active in the cable industry. Uh, they are leading a drive to build more and more cable systems. I think not only to secure the lowest price per meg, but also uh, to be able to, to uh, uh, decide on the design, on the routing, enhance the security. Uh, increase the capacity on the cables, etc. So we'll see clearly more and more cable system built by Google and and, and Facebook. Uh, last time I was reading an article, a quite interesting article, saying that today we have something around 70% uh, of cable systems owned by consortium and 30% uh, uh, single owned cables. In the near future, we will have a complete change, a complete inversion in the trend, uh, with around 70% of single owned or joint built cables. And 30% of consortium old uh, uh, cables. So for sure, we'll be buying more and more capacity from the OTTs. Also, I think this is a real opportunity for all of us. Uh, we just said it earlier. Ricardo said it. MT also. Uh, we 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 really need to be uh, collaborating uh, uh, between us, uh, OTTs, telco providers, backhaul providers, equipment providers, submarine cable vendors. Also, partnership is really key. Uh, is really important. We need to come together. Uh, to provide additional value to the customer and to sustain growth. Thank you. Um, staying at the operator side, so so um, uh, uh, MT. What 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 uh, Johar is actually saying is that that what we can expect is that um, uh, guys like uh, Ricardo and uh, and Chris are let's say um, uh, eating a bit of your sandwich because they will they will actually um, um, uh, are currently investing far more than you guys are doing with it by yourself or within your consortium and because they are part of they dictate in some ways even um, uh, uh, let, let's say the demand so what is your answer as as an um, uh, as an operator on, on, on this one next to partnering is can we still get let's say a little bit of fight in the industry or are we letting it just uh, you know somebody eating our sandwich mm, tell us actually come on. <laughs> I don't think uh, they are actually eating the sandwich, but actually, um, perhaps uh, you can think they are eating the same sandwich, but however, the sandwich is getting bigger. So eventually what we are eating is uh, maybe not even less than before, even though we are having the bigger sandwich and then everyone is able to be eat, eating the same sandwich and also creating with multiple uh, different style of the sandwich, and uh, you, they are the um, also the uh, cable uh, player, but they are also the user. And uh, actually, uh, I would say that the OTT going to uh, in uh, coming into the uh, cable industry also helping the cable in uh, cable development uh, much moving much more faster. I think uh, we we can actually just review um, uh, last ten years. Uh, before 2010, um, when that time the OTT player not really uh, participate too much on the cable system, but you can see uh, in this stage not too much cable being developed or being built because of uh, most of the uh, carrier or ca uh, operator we don't we don't have the sufficient funding uh, to building the uh, cable system. 
So I think maybe it is also the reason why the OTT coming into the market. Okay, I don't, I don't want to be wait uh, the, uh, the operator to build a cable. Why don't we build ourselves? I think, yeah, it is a very clear answer that uh, actually the OTT helping to create a bigger sandwich and different type of the sandwich, right? Thank you, MT. So Chris, you have deeper pockets. You have far deeper pockets mm -hmm. and you don't want to wait. And you actually sometimes want to cooperate, but sometimes you say, you know what, guys? We'll just invest ourselves. We have deeper pockets. We'll just go for it. So tell us, what, what, what can we expect? And, uh, and, um, and how do you make sure that uh, even if you create or with your content, create, let's say, that the sandwich will be bigger with all the tomato ketchup, mayonnaise, and whatever sauce on it, and it will be just bigger and maybe more tastier. I mean, more diverse for sure as you mentioned in your opening statement there, Chris. But um, uh, how will you make sure that you will not eat the bigger sandwich? I, th I think that sandwich is, 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 is getting so big. And I think why uh, the OTTs and Google have gone into that. And it's so that we don't have to wait for that supply. And I think MT kind of summarized it quite well. It's like, and also a little bit of kind of um, uh, uh, technology innovation. So, you know, Google have done a lot with protocol optimization and, um, you know, applying different technologies and also applying a different pace and a, and a different recovery for cables as well. Uh, and part of that is because we, we don't want to wait for our own services and our customers don't want to wait either. I'll give, I'll give another example. Uh, Vijay mentioned um, PCCW Console Connect. So before, if you wanted 10 gig from Europe to America, you know, last mile, different providers set up contracts, paperwork. Sometime it will be connected. With these kind of console connect type things, we call them um, software defined WAN. You kind of get a switch port in the in the IX, and you can go anywhere. <laughs> and and that is what businesses expect now. They expect to get their 10 gig to another continent immediately. You well, know. one of the one of the big things for 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 the for the let's say the second half of this year, next year will be wireless SD WAN. I mean, mm, that, right. that's what, what we all see coming and, and we need to be prepared on, on this one. But thank you for pushing, eh? Chris. Mm, Always mm. keep us to, to push us. But please continue. Please continue. Sorry. So, yeah. So if that's the expectation of the end users and the customers and the, the, the consumers of this bandwidth. We need to be there to provide it. So it's just to accelerate that uh, delivery of the, of the actual capacity. So and that's why a lot of them are collaborations. And um, yeah, we've collaborated, I think, with nearly everyone on the call. Mm -hmm. Okay, th thank you, Chris. So, uh, VJ, I'm, I'm seeing that we're, that we are actually over time already. We're running out of it. So, um, uh, some some famous last words from you and from Telen on uh, on let's say, well, well, how do you see the future? What, what, what's their expect for us? Well, what what can we see coming? What, yeah. Uh, what are you seeing? Uh, I think two things, Eric. Uh, first one on uh, supply side. If we are talking about supply side, then uh, as we discuss uh, this afternoon or this morning, then uh, collaboration partnership between uh, operators and OTT is important. If not, then you cannot develop uh, your own capacity by your own. You need somebody else to help you. You need, to somebody, uh, you need to somebody else to at least is your investment. Yeah, uh, if not, then uh, all the burden will come to you. That's, uh, that's the, the first uh, thing that I, I would like to learn for this discussion. Second thing, uh, I would like to learn also from other wholesale market, which is uh, 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 voice and uh, A2P SMS. The future of uh, voice and A2P SMS will be uh, platform and then marketplace. The other one is on the uh, uh, transaction model, which is uh, they are used, start to uh, using uh, some kind of blockchain or, or uh, distributed ledger. I think. Uh, Learning from these two uh, on, on supply side and on the future of uh, A2P and voice uh, wholesale, I would like to say that collaboration is the most important thing that we need to have in the future. If not, then uh, you will be left behind and you uh, will be out of this uh, connectivity business. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Um, guys, I'm, I'm seeing from the audience just a question coming in and I still want to include it in, in our discussion. Just a quick quick comment from, from, from you guys. Um, um, uh, so from Larry, thank you um, uh, for, for your question coming in. Is there more room for more submarine cable with all OTT locating their data centers within uh, 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 country due to data uh, sovereignty? and uh, latency requirements so it, it was a bit of a detailed uh, the detailed questions and then who of you would like to take that for for, for an answer is there anybody i would say no i can know that uh, uh, the submarine cables are going to to, to be uh, de delivered at a slower pace uh, au contraire i believe that the data localization refers to some small portion. We have to analyze what is the volume of the data that is being exchanged. And the majority of that data is not subject to data localization. And then when we talk about latency, yes, some applications might require latency, but here we have a false base in Singapore, based in Hong Kong, based in, in Europe, and uh, we are just talking and it works. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and uh, when people talk about latency, I believe that, okay, if you have a data center in the West Coast of the US and you are serving someone in the East Coast, it's the same as you having a data center in Europe and serving people in the East Coast. So I believe that we have to, to put as well uh, all, all those things in context. So just a quick answer, no, we don't see any uh, 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 slowing the development of submarine cable. I believe that uh, that trend is going to continue and that uh, new applications will require more bandwidth, uh, more resiliency, more physical diversity, and more mm -hmm. global connectivity. Okay. Somebody else? Just one. Want, want, want yeah, just, Jar? just a quick yeah, well, experience. Oh, sorry, please. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Jay. Just want to add uh, on, on one record that was saying. Saying I, I I do agree. I think we will have fewer uh, new builds, uh, but the the, the um, capacity on these new builds will be really very very key. Uh, we speak about cable systems with uh, more and more uh, capacity, more and more fiber pairs. Uh, Google's Dunant between France and USA is now ready for service, and I think this is about 12 fiber pairs and and up to 250. Uh, terabit of, uh, of uh, capacity. This is really very, 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 very big. Uh, we speak also more and more about 400 gig wavelengths. I think, Ricardo, you said earlier uh, that uh, the uh, life cycle of a new cable will be shorter. That's why it is important, I think, for new cables to assess the feasibility to upgrade to um, uh, 400 gig transmission wavelengths from a technical and, and commercial uh, point of view. Uh, same thing, new technologies like uh, spectrum, uh, spectrum um, uh, division multiplexing. Uh, and I think also something that will be popular in the near future will be the spectrum leads with uh, activation on demand. Uh, that will be something really uh, very popular in the future for, uh, for the uh, uh, telco providers. Thank you, Johar. Uh, VJ, you quickly wanted to... Yeah, just a quick, uh, quick yeah. thing, uh, Eric. Uh, I just want to share our experience in Tallinn. Uh, we have a kind of rule of thumb. Uh, every 100 pack that you uh, build in the local, then uh, you need around 20 to 30 percent of uh, global connectivity. Uh, let's say, uh, for example, we have uh, Google, uh, around 40 percent of our traffic, but until today, we are still discussing with them how to expand the global uh, connectivity uh, from uh, Indonesia to other countries. That's, that's why I still believe that. Uh, there is a regulation on 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 uh, on uh, data protection, something like that. But still, uh, the global connectivity will uh, thrive and uh, grow faster. Great, thank you, thank you, VJ. Chris, quick one, quick, quick, quick. We're running out of time. Yeah, yeah. The, the the demand is growing for all of them for data sovereignty, for latency, but also for subsea just as much. And I think VJ summed that up nicely. At least 20% for whatever you deliver at the edge, which is going up exponentially, you've got to deliver at least 20% subsea. So uh, continued demand. Okay, thank, thank, thank you very much. And um, um, uh, I would like to, 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 to thank you all. So, so um, uh, MT, VJ, 
uh, Joha, Ricardo, and, and Chris, um, it has been an honor of, of having you here at the, at the panel. And uh, Vijay, thank you so much for your uh, for your uh, knowledge sharing uh, keynote presentation from uh, from yourself and Talon uh, were with us. So, um, uh, guys, with um, uh, with uh, if you agree, we have to cut it. Unfortunately, we could talk for another hour, which we <laughs> do in the future. So stay tuned with Carry Community, guys, because we'll be discussing the, the, the nice topics uh, with you and for you. So um, uh, um, again, MT, VJ, Johar, Ricardo, and Chris, thanks again. Thank you all out there. And um, I say ciao for now and give the word uh, back to the studio in Berlin. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Au revoir. Thank you, Eric. Dear all, we are at the end of this webinar session, and I would like to thank our keynote speaker, Vijay, for his interesting presentation, panelists for joining and sharing the knowledge. Also, I would like to thank our audience for participating and listening. This webinar session will be soon available on our CC Media portal for you to watch. We are looking forward to welcoming you in both physical and virtual events this year. For more information, please visit our events portal. If you're interested in supporting and sponsoring one of our future branded webinars, contact CC Team. For all updates and fresh content, follow us on our social media channels. Also, subscribe to our Telegram news channel to receive exclusive invitations to our upcoming CC webinar live sessions. That's all for today and goodbye. See you next time.